The intent of this channel is if you're handy and you don't have unlimited funds or want to go out and finance a very expensive RV and you want to get out there and camp anyways, my intention or our intention is to show you how to take something that could be very inexpensive because it needs some work or something that is actually on the verge of being scrapped or discarded and using that opportunity to get you out there camping and enjoy it. So one caution I will throw out there is that you do have to have the desire to do a lot of work on your own. In other words, be a do-it-yourselfer and have basic knowledge of hand tools and some mechanical ability. I am not a professional. I'm not an RV repair guy. Everything I'm showing you is either stuff I've done for the first time or done as a result of getting our own projects set up the way we want them, modified to meet our needs, or just plain old restored from unusable condition to a usable condition. So like, subscribe, follow along, enjoy. It's going to be fun, entertaining, and hopefully educational. Oh, there's the test fit. Now I can figure out what I need for materials for metal and wood. So uh, we're going to finish off the wood portion first, and then we'll uh, put the metal pieces in next. All right, folks, so I've got the metal frame all tacked together. Hopefully all the fabrication work is done. I've got holes drilled to fasten the frame with uh, screws to the wood uh, that's going to make up the camper. Um, I've got some brackets to hook up to the vertical structure in the camper. These holes are through holes to go to the horizontal structure of the camper. This is for the torsion spring. The hinges are bolted on. I ended up putting some threaded inserts. Um, the weld bungs, welded in bungs. So the, the hinge is bolted to the cross member. Again, I used the door as a fixture. I've got quarter inch shims all the way around. It's spaced up the uh, proper amount for the flange to sit against the frame and the gasketing. So uh, this probably took me 10 hours to do. A um, lot of holes drilled, uh, drilling and tapping, making those bungs on the with the threaded inserts for the hinges and uh, just a lot of fabrication work. So tomorrow when I get some help I'm going to flip it and weld the um, other sides of the tubes and um, and then hopefully I'm gonna I'm gonna fit check it take it back down bring it back up here do a real thorough paint job on it and then put it back in the camper for the final time hopefully uh, the other thing I did was I welded uh, chases through the tubing uh, so it's metal tubes for the trailer wiring to pass through for the marker lights and the brake lights and such so both uh, down below and up top so hopefully uh, you know you try to think of everything but chances are I missed a ton we'll find out when I bring this down there to put it in place well folks we're trying to get this uh, toy hauler conversion move further along and We've had torrential rain last night and today, and we're just trying to make the best of it and get further progress done. We've got the metal structure that the door is going to be attached to, the metal framework, and we are ready to stand that up in place. So um, we're going to do that in the next few minutes. Hopefully that'll go well. Gotta go up above. So this is 
Well, there it is. I didn't want to put the diamond plate. It actually works. The concept has been proven. You know, it's cold outside. All right, we're doing a quick light check to make sure all of my wiring is uh, is correct. So I've got side marker light tied in here. This is just temporary because this will get fed through the aluminum siding. Got the marker light, the three centers, the far right, and then the other. I'm putting LED tail lights on it and the side marker works which is tied in here and then that feeds some of the others. So we ran wires through uh, behind the header that we put up there and it's got a routered channel on the back side. It goes through all the wiring chases that we put in on the steel structure. So, I'm um, just a few minutes away from starting to put the aluminum siding on. I've got to clean all the butyl tape or whatever this stuff is off, put new on, and then start stapling it in. I want to close this up and get it weather tight. Alright, on to the next step. Alright folks, quick update. Uh, I got this corner all put back together. Aluminum siding's all on. My cousin Steve did the paneling for along the rail by the bed. Uh, I've got a reflector put up here to cover up the hole because I had to raise those marker lights up because of the steel beam. And I've, I've got to work on closing in this corner. So we're getting there. Uh, still got to fabricate the bed. Um, making, waiting for the mess to be all cleared, and then I'll put the flooring down. I'll show you that when it's done. So I'm gonna seal that corner up, and then move on from there. All right, folks. I'm getting ready to put the final trim on this corner, and uh, from the factory, they had this wrapped around the inside and then the rear panel over the top of it and I just can't see how driving down the road that wouldn't force water in underneath the rear panel so I chose to wrap it around the outside I have butyl tape between the vertical stud and the rear panel and then I have butyl tape between the rear panel and then the outer side panel you can see I got the squish out here and then the trim is going to get butyl tape on the outside and on the inside and the screws go in the middle. You can see I put a lot of staples in uh, just to hold it into shape. Um, the majority of the issues that happens with campers is these corners 
leak and then the water follows down the inside along the stud soaks that the older campers have wool bat insulation it acts as a sponge it soaks up the water it never dries out and then this waterproof barrier is wrapped around and captured underneath and it acts as a swimming pool and it saves it all and the rear cross member that the metal piece here replaced was just powder I think I showed that to you before and it just crumbled and then the vertical studs that attached to that the last four inches of it were just missing because they rotted out so um, that's why I'm going so nuts with all the ceiling and the configuration of the side being wrapped around the rear just to keep the rain from driving down the road and having it being forced into that corner the butyl tape on the final trim should prevent it from making it any further than just inside that lip alright so we're getting there I'm, uh, I'm gonna put that trim on and then I'll seal up that hole with a reflector like I did over there and that pretty much makes the camper weather tight again so uh, that's a good thing so that's why I was able to pull a tarp off and uh, finish up the outside I gotta weld the um, the new cross member to the old one before I cut the bumper off and I'm gonna put some diagonal bracing and gusseting in there to prevent that frame rail from wanting to twist uh, what else so anyway, um, I'm going to bring my welder down from the shop, and my cousin made an extension cord to go from my generator outlet over there, over to, so my welder can park here and have enough leads to do what I need to do. So, we're getting close, and then uh, I can focus on the interior after that. Alright, so this is the butyl tape I picked up. Uh, it's just a Home Depot. It's five bucks a 50 foot roll. This is quarter inch wide by 3 16 thick. You can see it fits great in the groove on this corner channel. So I'm uh, going to make sure that all of my ceiling up top that goes underneath this is uh, got some integrity. And then I'm going to go ahead and screw this corner bracket on. I'll start at the top and work my way down. So to fasten that corner molding on, I'm actually using the roofing screws that you use for metal siding that has the neoprene washer in it, and uh, it just provides a bigger bearing surface to push down on the thing. And these are another quarter inch longer than the factory ones, so they'll go further into the wood. So um, hopefully that'll work out well. Alright folks, the exterior of the camper conversion is done. So I've got the aluminum trim around the outside that the gasket on the door seals against. I put the gasket on the door, I got some rain gutter across the top of the trim and overall uh, reinforced where the rear bumper was cut off to prevent the deflection of the I-beam and Everything is weathered in, so um, I've got silicone around all the light fixtures. I've changed all of the lights to LED bulbs or fixtures. Uh, let's see, so the next, the hot water heater is reinstalled. And uh, the next thing is the bed and the flooring. So um, we've 
we haven't had rain uh, a day without rain we had one day without rain in the last six so it's really been a struggle getting this done I was able to remove the tent yesterday and it was all weathered in and sure enough at about six o'clock last night we had a massive storm cell move through with thunder and lightning and everything else so uh, came out finished up the thing the good news is as I came out after that storm cell melt came through with the driving rain and wind and there's zero leaks so that's a big 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 comfort to me so uh, I'll show you the the way the gasket works on the door in just a second okay so the way the the hinge assembly works from the factory is the surface where the gasket sits away from where the hinge bolts to is three-eighths of an inch so you have to come up with some mechanism to fill that gap so what I did was on top of my on top of my steel structure I put an eighth inch shim metal shim and then an eighth inch strip stock of aluminum and that aluminum is wide enough to capture both push down on that steel shim which is bolted to the metal tube and then this uh, captures the aluminum siding properly and then what happens is when you adjust the door the gasketing compresses down to as little as an eighth of an inch so I'm pulling this down to probably from a half inch down to about three sixteenths so I've got a real nice um, seal compression on there so the doors all adjusted with the the latches so this part is ready to rock and roll so uh, I made myself a threshold here that'll trap the flooring that you'll see in a little while and um, first I'm gonna get all of the fabrication done or woodworking done to get the bed and the hinge mechanism so it folds up to allow the motorcycle uh, in the back of the trailer so I need to get going on that because we need to get going on vacation all right we got the folding bed all set I just need to put a barrel lock to engage the steel frame the hinge is done the swing out support is done when you uh, fold the bed down that swings down so that's all set and I'm getting ready to do the flooring I'll show you what that looks like in a little while alright so we got the flooring done we got the thresholds installed both the front and back the beds made and the rub rail is installed so you don't hurt yourself climbing in and out of bed and we'll show you how it folds up in just a moment so there's the bed folded up and I have little barrel locks here that are going to have an engagement with a bracket to keep them from flopping around and we also have a hole drilled in the floor so when we're going down the road if the bed is down it doesn't jiggle around and collapse while you're going down the road um, to hold it up in place I have the barrel lock here and I've got another one over there so uh, this thing is just about ready to put the motorcycle in you can see um, get the threshold for the transition between the flooring so this is the husky garage flooring it's like a quarter inch thick rubber that locks together it's not fastened to the floor at all it's captured by the thresholds front and rear and then just kind of manage there we're gonna try it see how it works uh, we were delayed a day on this because I bought enough material to do the whole floor which was three boxes and somebody had returned a box to Home Depot with only five squares in it instead of six so I had to package up that package of five take it back exchange it for a package of six and this afternoon we were able to finish the floor so all right 
so far I'm pretty happy with this stuff. It cuts real easy with, um, actually I use sheet metal shears and um, put it in position. So um, one of the last things I need to do is I have a cabinet door to put on this. That's right here. And that's going to go on there just to have access for winterization so the isolation valve for the hot water heater is in there and also um, the connection to pull antifreeze directly into the pump for winterization so all right I think that's it the next thing you'll see hopefully is the motorcycle in here being strapped down and uh, we have 72 hours before we depart. Alright folks, that's it for this time. Remember, if you can't be good, be spectacular.